The title of the message is keep on walking. Amen. Keep on walking. Just keep on walking. No matter what you're going through. Y'all going through something where you need to be walking? You just keep on walking. I don't care what it is. A lot of us don't do that. And if you came expecting today, if you came expecting today, you're going to leave change because you're going to get something here. Amen? Some of y'all sticking around for a second dose of this because it's, uh, it's already moved you. Just keep walking. Amen? And you, do you know shorthand? Because you're going to have to write them scriptures down fast. I'm going to be burning up some slides here. Amen? Glory. Just keep walking. I don't care what you're going through. Just keep walking. Say, just keep walking. Just keep walking. Glory to God. First service, I was at Scott's funeral home. I'm back at church. Woo! Genesis 5, 21 through 24. It's the first scripture. And Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. That's a long time. And Enoch, what? Walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. He walked with God. Amen. He walked with God. Next slide. Genesis 6, 8 and 9 says, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect, and perfect in his generations. Among them that he was around, he was a pretty cool guy. And Noah walked with God. Noah walked with God. It's important to know this now, okay? We got to just keep walking. These two men of God walked with God. Enoch and Noah have something in common. In fact, the thing that he has in common, they have in common, is that they were both delivered from the perils and the trials and the tribulations of this dark and perverse world that they lived in. Amen? And some of us probably got, we could probably say, man, I wish he would just deliver me from this dark. Well, he can. If you will walk with God, in the midst of this dark and perverse world, you will be the light. Amen? But you got to keep walking. With Enoch, God took him out of the world. And with Noah, he took everything that was dark and perverse away and left him in this world to start anew. Amen? Amen. In both cases, the Bible tells us that these men found mercy and grace from God. Mercy and grace from God. Not because they did some great thing. Not because... They were heavenly superstars. The Bible simply says this. They walked with God. Amen. Don't miss this. This is so powerful. I know a lot of you are going to be walking around the rest of the day telling other people, just keep walking. Because that's what you've got to do. This may not seem like much. It may, you know, that you've, you have got the message in a nutshell already. I could quit right now. The Spirit's probably already told you. You just need to keep going through whatever you're going through. You just need to keep walking. But I got four and a half more pages of notes so you're not getting over that easy. Amen? Amen. Glory. <laughs> but in study and in prayer and in my personal life myself, God's allowed me to go through some storms that I'm currently going through. And He's telling me, you got to just keep walking. And I'm telling you as encouragement, as encouraging as I can. You just got to keep walking. I don't know what you're going through. I don't need to know unless God puts it on your heart. But you got to walk through it. Okay, you've got to just keep walking. It has been impressed upon me that those who will be victorious are not the ones that are perfect. I have learned it's not the ones that don't have any problems. It's not the ones that never struggle. They're already puppets of the devil, folks. But it's those that are in the midst of trouble. The victorious ones are those that are in the midst of discouragement. It's those of you that are in the midst of persecution. It's those of you that are in the midst of ridicule. That's the victorious ones. The ones that are in the midst of family problems. I'm sure we got everybody by now. <laughs> the victorious ones are the ones that's in the midst of peer pressure. Our youngest ones. Especially our youngest ones. The peer pressure. The victorious ones are the ones that's in... The midst of every conceivable hindrance that I couldn't write down or type out. If I missed it, put your blank in there. Whatever you're going through. Amen? You're the victorious one if you just keep walking. If you just keep walking. Amen? Maybe not leaping. May, not bounding over tall buildings. Okay? 
maybe not running through grassy vales, being with a trail behind you, just saying, I'm, I'm, uh, everything's going great. Maybe not scale, scaling mountaintops. Maybe not making a whole lot of progress at all. But you got to just keep walking. Amen. Just keep walking with God. Amen. Our relationship with God has always been about walking. It's always been about... Uh, our relationship with Him has always been defined as a walk. Get ready to start writing, Barbara. First one is Romans 6, 4. Therefore we are buried with Him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk, walk in the newness of life. We've got to walk in the newness of life. Are you getting this? Next slide. Romans 8, 1. Therefore is, there is therefore now no what? Condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who what? Walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. We have to walk in the Spirit of God. But not after the flesh. So not only is it defined as a walk, our relationship with the Lord is defined as what kind of walk? And that's a walk with God. Are you walking with Him today? You've got to keep on walking. You've got to keep on walking. Romans 13 starts off with, Let us walk honestly. It tells you how to walk. What kind of walk you should be walking. 1 Corinthians 7, 17, But as God hath distributed to every man, as the Lord hath called every one, so let him what? Walk. And so ordained I in all churches. We must walk with God. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we walk by what? Faith, not by sight. So many of us walk and then we get discouraged because of what we see. But we have to walk on faith and what we believe. Amen? Not what we see. The circumstances behind us can get really discouraging. The circumstances all around us can just really destroy us. I mean, if we, if we, if we ponder and stay on the negative of things around us, it's easy to sit down and quit walking. It says we walk by faith. Amen. Walk by faith. Not what we see, but what we believe. What we know is going to happen. It is not easy. It's easy to say. But it's not easy to keep taking that next step. But you've got to believe it. Amen. Galatians 5.16 says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Because it's all around us. This dark and perverse world is bombarding us with everything that... We, our own friends bring things in into our relationship that shouldn't be there. And we get, dis we, we, we get distracted. But if we walk in the Spirit all the time, as much as we can, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We will not fulfill those things that you know you shouldn't be doing. Everything from A to Z. Amen? The only way to keep from that is to walk in the Spirit of God. Amen? From the time we begin our relationship with God, it's ordained that we walk and not sit still. Too many of us sit still. Too many Christians get saved and then they just sit on their you-know-whats inside the pew at the church. But they're not walking. They're not walking for the Lord. If you're walking, things are happening. I guarantee you, you're in a storm. If you're walking, there's a storm going on. If there's no storm, you're a puppet of the devil already. You ain't doing nothing. So the devil's happy. He's got you sitting still. It is the intention of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, that we are continually progressing, progressing in the Spirit. Next step. Amen. Isaiah 40, 31 reads, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Amen. Amen. Walk and not faint. We are continually to be moving toward the goal that God has set before us. And that goal is over when we take our last breath. Some people fly around us. Some people can run marathons. Some people can climb to the mount, to the top of the mountain. But most of us just have to walk. And that's all we got to do is just keep walking. Just keep taking those steps. Amen. Our Christian walk has been defined as a race. But it's not a race with swift runners. It's ones that are just plodding on. Most of you know that follow me on Facebook that I took my 10 year old on an 11 mile hike a two day trek and we had to talk we had to have a long talk about making it amen he's my little man now my little buddy made it so this old man we didn't make it fast <laughs> it was one step after another and those steps got shorter amen Hebrews 12.1 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight, 
every weight and the sin which doth not so easily beset us and a lot of theologians believe that's doubt the sin of doubt and let us run with patience the race that is set before us and that word for running doesn't mean the fastest because we have to endure the race is different than other races bless you Solomon said that the race is not always the swift and Jesus said this race is going to be won by those who endure to the end that's when we take our last breath this is a marathon folks so running fast is not going to do you any good. The winners will be the ones that ignore the distractions in their lives. The winners are going to be those that ignore the muscle cramps. <laughs> the winners are the ones that are going to ignore that they're, um, they have these opportunities to quit. And the, Spitting all over you, sorry about that. These opportunities to quit come and they sometimes present themselves in a way that you think it's of God. I've been released from this ministry. <laughs> I've been released from that. You need to listen to what the Holy Spirit's really telling you, okay? Because if you have total 100% release, you'll feel total peace about it. And so will those around you. You just got to keep walking in wherever you're at and keep walking towards the goal God set before you. Amen? Because the winners are the ones who ignore all these things that can take us from it. I know you all have heard the story about the tortoise in the hare. Ain't nobody in here ain't never heard that story. And we all know who won. And it wasn't the fastest, was it? It wasn't the fastest. It was the turtle. And it was the turtle because the turtle stayed plugging away. Real slow steps. Kind of like a 55-year-old at the top of a long, long hill with a 58-pound backpack on. Okay, they were real short. And the little man was like, let's stop. And I was like, dude, if we stop, this man's going to have a heart attack or a stroke. We got to keep walking. <laughs> we got to keep walking. Okay, and I was over so much he could put his hand on my shoulder and say, Okay, Daddy. And he helped me walk. Amen. Till I could get my breath back. Can't let anything distract you. Can't anything take you away from doing what you're supposed to do. You got to keep plugging away. But there's those around us that are running like this hare and they're going faster and faster and faster. But what happens to them? Those that are on fire and doing everything, they suddenly get distracted and you just don't see them anymore. You just keep plugging away. You just keep walking. Just keep walking. Going where God's called you to do. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I may not be running. I know a lot of y'all ain't running. I may not be leaping. I know a lot of y'all ain't leaping. I may not be climbing mountains. But I am enduring. And you can be enduring. All you got to do is take one step. I don't care what your age is. I don't care what your capabilities are. If you're taking one step after the other, you're getting one step closer to the goal that God set before you. I told Ethan when we got to that 3.1 mile marker, it wasn't a marker, it was, I knew we'd gone 3.1 miles and we had 6.5 miles total for the first day. And I told him when we were sitting there and he was some tears in the little man's eyes and we had a pep talk. And I was explaining to him, every step that direction is towards victory. And every step that direction back towards the car is not victory. And that everybody that knows me and everybody that knows you will know that we're losers if we go back to the car. But you need to make this choice. And I would tell you that I love you with all my heart. And I don't care which way we go. Didn't I tell you that? I don't care which way we go. I will always love you. But remember, if we go back that way, we're losers. And if we go that way, we'll get to camp. Then I even threw it on him some more while he's eating his snack. I said, and when we get there, guess what? We've got to get up tomorrow and we've got to do it all over again. I told you and I lied to you. I said, we've got to go five and a half miles tomorrow. I said, we've got to go five and a half miles. He wasn't quite putting six and a half, five and a half meant 12. We only had 11 to go. I waited till the next morning to tell him the truth. Glory to God. He was all excited when it was only four and a half miles. But the thing is, is I left it up to him. Amen? I left it up to him. But I'm going to tell you right now, I wouldn't have done it myself if it hadn't have been him there with me. Because I got my t-shirt. I did all this 30 years ago. I don't care what y'all think. So if I'd been by myself, I probably would have turned around and went back by that car. You know what I'm saying? I guarantee you. I had no purpose to have a 58-pound back on a 55-year-old man. It's just, I got a 33-foot Class A motorhome. So I think I'm borderline of being crazy, stupid, and nuts all at the same time. But I need to prove something to a young man. You've got to overcome those distractions in your life. You've got to overcome the obstacles in your life. You've got to overcome what Satan puts in here because you know what? We stop so many times physically and emotionally right. and spiritually right. because Satan puts something in our minds. It's doubt. It's intimidation. It's fear. Whatever it is. And you become a failure because you allowed it to happen up here. That's right. I was totally shocked. 
I just knew without a doubt we were going to turn back and go back to that car. And when that little man pointed down that way, I said, are you sure? And I even made sure that he understood. When we get there, son, we're spending the night. But when we get up, we've got to go five and a half more miles. Are you sure? He said, I'm sure. Inside, I was like, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. You have got to keep on walking. You've got to keep on walking. In Genesis 13, God gives Abraham some great promises. Check this out. This is powerful. And the Lord, listen to all these promises. And the Lord said to Abram, after that, Lot was separated from him. Lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward. And if y'all ain't put that together, that means look all around you. Look everywhere around you. Look as far as you want to. Verse 15 says, For all the land which thou seest, all, not some, not part, not most, for all the land that thou seest, to thee will I give it and to the seed forever. And not only that, he promises them this in 16, I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. He's saying there ain't nobody else going to be able to number the seed that's going to come from you. Are you seeing this? What so, huge promises. I'm excited. But verse 17, don't miss this. This don't get preached. Arise and what? Walk through the land in the length of it. Where? The whole length of it and the breadth of it. For I will give it unto thee. <laughs> he didn't say just sit and relax. I'll give it to you. He said walk it, man. You got to walk it. You can need to see. Abraham removed his tent and he did what? He moved on. Come on now. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. Too many times, a lot of us, and I, I, I'm, I've been there, and I, I sometimes find, my, find myself there too. Just pray about it. I'll be taken care of. Now, some, you got to keep on stepping. you got to keep on walking. Joshua was told he'd have water, but who dug the well? Joshua. Not only that, but his enemies filled it up. See, that's a whole, another whole message. Enemies filled it up, he had to dig another one. Enemies filled it up, he had to dig another one. There's always an obstacle for you. Come on now. Abraham had his obstacles. He said, Abraham, I'll give you everything that you're looking at. But in order for you to get it and possess it, you have to walk. Are you getting this? Y'all getting him? Uh, now that the one thing, what is the one thing that could have stopped Abraham from getting all the promises from God? Don't miss this because so many of us are missing out promises from God. God has got things He's promised you. There's things waiting for you. But you're not walking. So you've got to keep taking the steps to receive what God's got for you. What He's promised you. See, the only thing that could stop Abraham from receiving the promises of God is if he quit walking. Do you see that? It was there. But he could have not received all that by simply not walking. God said, as much land as your foot touches will be yours, baby. It's all yours. I want to tell you this morning that the enemy of our soul cannot take away the promises of God. He cannot take them away, but he can discourage you to quit walking. And if you quit walking, he won the battle. Do you understand this? As long as we keep walking, no matter how slow, no matter how, how laboring it is, we're still winning the, and we're going to get a victory out of the deal. We may have some hardships to overcome. I need to reword that for the next time I ever preach this. We will have some hardships to overcome. May is not correct. We will have some hardships to overcome. We will have to walk through some unpleasant places. It's going to happen. But as long as we keep walking, we'll get through them eventually. <laughs> we'll get through them eventually. Amen. Sometimes when, you, when, you, when God closes the door over here and you've got to get to this door, that's a long hallway of hell before the other door's there. And you've got to keep on walking to get through it. A lot of us are in that hallway and we're not walking. And we're just living daily, daily, just every day in hell because we're not walking. We've got to walk through that. Amen. We've got to walk through that fire. David said in Psalm 23, 4, he said, Yea, though I walk. Y'all see how many times walk is in here? Woo. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. He's saying, I'm not going to stay in this valley. This is death. I am not going to stay here. Yeah, this is a bad place. I'm going to keep on walking. I'm going to walk through the valley of death. And there's people here that need to walk through that valley of death. Amen? 
Next slide. Psalm 138, 7 says, Though I walk in the midst of trouble. Now everybody can relate to this probably right this minute. In some way, shape, or form. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies. I don't care if that's flesh or spiritual. We all have enemies. And the right, what's it say? Huh? Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies and thy right hand shall save me. Glory to God. Isn't that awesome? But you got to be walking. He says, though I walk in the midst of trouble. Doesn't say, though I sit here and pray in the midst of troubles. Though I, it says, I walk in the midst of troubles. God, I am the, I am in the presence of my enemies. You could say that today. I'm in the presence of my spiritual or physical enemies. I am there right now and I am still walking. Amen. I'm going to keep walking. I don't care who says what. I did, you could say, I, I don't understand why I'm where I'm at. I, I don't understand what God's doing right now. You can say that. He understands. You're not supposed to understand. He's God. I don't understand what's going on. I don't know where you're taking me or why. But I know I'm on the right path, so I'm just going to keep walking. Can you do that? Just tell God, I'm just going to keep walking. You got me lost like last year's Easter eggs. I have no clue. I'm completely clueless. I am C squared. I have no idea why I'm doing this, but I'm going to keep on walking, Lord. Because I'm doing it for you. And it don't hurt to say, hey, I'd like to not be clueless. Help me out here. Amen. Give me some wisdom. Sometimes we have to walk through darkness. Sometimes we have to walk through the desert. Sometimes we have to walk through the fire. Some people have walked through the prison cell. Some people walk through the jail cells. Some people are on a journey right now and it's not very, very pleasant. But you've got to keep on walking. You got to keep on walking. The ones who get the victory are the ones who just keep walking. You can't get a victory without walking. I promise you that wherever you walk, wherever it is, you will not be alone. You will not be alone. If you have, if you've asked Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you've asked Him in your heart, if you if you believe and you've claimed Jesus as Lord, you can't be alone. Amen. You can feel alone, but you can't be alone. He's with you every way. God will walk you through every trial. God will walk you through every temptation. He will, he will walk you through every storm. He will walk you through every problem that you can ever imagine. And the ones that you're going through right now, if you keep on walking. If you keep on walking. Take a look at these three Hebrew boys. Everybody knows this story. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. They fell down bound. I want you to take that and look at that for a second. I can tell you right now, the enemy tries to bind you up. The enemy tries to bind you up. Amen? They wants to bind you up and keep you from walking. How many of y'all are bound up right now? Keeping you from walking. The goal of the enemy is to knock you down so you won't continue to walk. To get you off your feet. But look what happens when God's in the fire. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Next slide. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men in the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. And 25, he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Isn't that exciting? God's in the fire, man. He's in the fire. You can walk in the furnace that was designed to knock you off your feet. You can walk through the valley of the shadow of death that was designed for you to perish. But you've got to walk with God. You can keep walking when your enemy is trying to destroy you as long as God is with you. No matter what happens or where your journey takes you, you've got to keep on walking. Amen? Now listen. This was written in about 600 BC. Or this is about 600 BC when the Babylonians took the Israelites. Okay, And these Hebrew children that we're reading about right here are part of that group. Now we're talking probably thousands. I know I'm not a huge historian, but we're probably talking thousands. There was three groups of people that you can take from these that were in captivity. Okay, And the first group you read about is in Psalm 137, 1, which is not a slide for, but it's, they're by the rivers of Babylon. There they sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. These are the people that surrendered and gave up. Now I don't believe there's anybody in here that's in that situation because you're here. The people that usually are in that situation are people that you know of that used to go to church that don't anymore. Hello. So that means you probably know somebody in the first group and if God put their name on your heart, you just now got a divine appointment that you need to set up ASAP. God just gave you a mission. You need to talk to whoever's in the first group. But now the second group we're going to talk about is the group that 
They've been given names. Which is all the Israelites and Hebrews are given names. And when they're given names, their life is to change. And that's never, it, it, to this day, it's, you know, that's, that's how they do. They try to brainwash people into living the way they were once another nation takes over a nation. Or, or you know what I'm saying, an, an, another empire takes over an empire. So they wanted these Israelites and Hebrews to act like Babylonians. So they gave them names. Now we know of four of these people that had their names changed. Listen to the type of way their names were changed. Daniel, his name meant God is my judge. God is my judge. His name was changed to Belteshazzar, which means Bel's prince. So he went from being God is my judge to being the prince of another god, quote unquote. You see what I'm saying? Hananiah, his Hebrew name meant whom Jehovah has graciously given. And they changed his name to Shadrach, which means young friend of the king. What a change on emphasis about this man. Mishael, who is what God is. It meant who is what God is. That's, that's powerful. What a name to have. And it was changed to Meshach. Meshach's not really well known on what it is, but most theologians believe it means little lamb or sheep. He changed from who is what God is to an insignificant animal, a little lamb or a sheep. And the last one, Azariah, whom Jehovah helps. Whom Jehovah helps. To Abednego, which means a servant of Nego. You see how these things changed. And they did this with thousands of people. But we know about these four for a reason. Okay? See, we don't know about any of those others in the second group. Why? Because they did. In Rome, act like the Romans do. They became Babylonians. They did like the Babylonians did. They fell under the things of the world. That second group is the people that are... Some of you are sitting in here right now. But when you walk out this door, you act like everybody else. And they don't know that you're part of the body of Christ. Do you understand me? You have taken on what the world has called you. So instead of being a blood-bought saint of God, you're just like somebody else and you fit right in. Do you see what I'm saying? That's the second group. But the third group, the reason we know those four names is because they kept on walking. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they, kept, they refused to give in to the things of this world. They did not fit in. Everybody else could see that there was a difference. Amen? And they received favor from their friends and foes because of that. Favor from God Himself. These are the ones who... Uh, refused to bow down to the idol. These are the ones that refused to quit walking. I know I want to be a part of this third group. I don't know about you, but we need to be a part of this third group. Amen? We need to keep on walking. When we walk in this dark and perverse world, people should see Jesus on us. They should see by our actions. Amen? And by what we believe and do. The ones who may be knocked down, but get right back up. That's what we need to be. And we need to keep on walking. There was an old tactic used in the by the enemy years ago. Next slide. But Adonai Bezek fled. And they pursued after him and caught him and cut off his thumbs and his great toes. Why'd they do that? You can't march when your toes are missing. Your big toes are gone. You can't pull back the bow and really kill anybody with the way they did the bow and arrow back in those days. Which was just like this instead of like this now. And, and when you look at that, they made them ineffective and they didn't kill him. Do you understand? They made him ineffective. Without these items to, with the big toes and, and uh, your thumbs, you could, not be an, you could not be a warrior. And that's what Satan tries to do to you and us now. He tries to cut off our spiritual feet so that we will not be a warrior for Christ. And we sit still because we're wounded. In more recent times, the armies, and some of you do know from the first group there wasn't anybody that old but some of you are sitting in here and you know that they made little pits and they covered them up and they had wooden sticks that were sharpened and they did the same thing there and it wasn't to really kill the men it was to make them ineffective on the battlefield and take a couple other people to to, to minister to them do you see what's going on here that's a physical uh, idea and you see the spiritual analogy is to this day to this very day satan still tries to get you to stop walking by injuring your feet your spiritual feet that's why Paul said in Ephesians 5.15, See that ye walk circumspectly, as a, not as fools, but as wise men. You've got to see where you're walking. You've got to watch what you're doing. Amen? You've got to look around. We have family and we have friends that will set us off on the wrong path. Okay? And I ain't talking about getting to a taking a right turn or turning back. This weekend we came to, a, to two, two, two trails and we were six and a half miles. We were ready to go to the camp. And there was two trails leading that way. Didn't know which one. I'd never been there before. I wasn't sure which way to go. 
It was very, I said, well, we're going to take the, the, the one that turns the right us the heart and we're going to pray that takes us to the camp. We prayed, didn't we? We was like, oh, Lord, let this be the right trail. And we're like, I mean, not. we got to walk back, you know. But it was the right trail. But see, those trails got further and further apart and finally I couldn't see the other trail. And I was like, man, I hope that ain't the right trail because if that's the right trail, i got to walk all the way back up this hill that I'm walking down. But praise God, it was the right trail. We have friends, family, co-workers that try to lead us. Satan tries to steer you off the trail. You may still be walking, but you're on the wrong trail now and don't even know it until you get so far away and you don't want to back up, so you just keep on going. Yeah, somebody need to hear that. Amen. The next slide. Part of the armor. This is the last slide. Part of the armor that Paul mentions is this. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Do you see how important our feet are? And until I did this message, I never even paid much attention to this. I looked at it in a different perspective myself. But your feet are so important if you're going to keep on walking. And if you don't protect them with the gospel of peace, if you don't stay in the word of God, if you don't stay in prayer, if you don't stay in Christian fellowship with other blood-bought saints, your feet are going to get injured and you're not going to keep on walking. You're going to stop in your tracks. Do you understand? Do you all get that today? I have to make sure that I keep walking. And my word for you today God wants you to be encouraged. Just keep walking. I don't know where you're at, but God knows where you're at. God knows what you're going through. Nothing you're going through is surprising to Him. And He wants you to just keep on walking. So protect your feet and keep walking. What hallmarked Enoch? In closing, when you look at these guys, what hallmarked Enoch? What hallmarked Noah? What hallmarked Abraham? What hallmarked Daniel? What hallmarked all these great men in the Bible? It wasn't that they were some uh, uh, spiritual... Uh, guru that had all the answers. It wasn't that they were perfect in any way. They certainly wasn't. It was one thing. They walked with God. Amen. They just walked with God. They never gave up and they kept pressing forward. So I pray that today this me message is leaving you with this. That you're going you're gonna to renew your marching orders with Jesus Christ. You're going to renew your marching orders with Him today and you're making a commitment to Him that you're going to keep on walking. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you right now for a powerful message. Lord, I thank you for your son Jesus Christ. And Lord, I ask for the Holy Spirit to guide us to do the things and make the right decisions to just keep walking. Lord, I know there's so many people going through storms. Most of it, none of my business. But Lord, it's all your business. And Lord, for each and every individual that's, that, that, that is laying that at your feet right now spiritually, I pray that you lift them up. And Lord, that you help them just keep walking. Just keep on walking. And Lord, for those that you showed a name that's in the first group, that you set up that divine appointment so those individuals can share this short message in their own way and let those people know they need to get back up and start walking. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen.